Hello everyone, this is your instructor in Law on Obligations and Contracts and in this particular video, we will be discussing the first part of Joint and Solidary Obligations. So recall that there are different kinds of obligations under the Civil Code, namely, number one, pure and conditional obligations, number two, obligations with a period, Number three, alternative and facultative obligations. Number four, joint and solidary obligations. Number five, divisible and indivisible obligations. And number six, obligation with a penal clause. In this particular video, we will be discussing the first part of number four, joint and solidary obligations. Unang-una, pag-usapan natin yung concept ng joint and solidary obligations. So, in a joint or solidary obligation, there is a concurrence of two or more debtors and or two or more creditors in one and the same obligation. Meaning the same, kapag dalawa o higit pa sa dalawa yung debtor, and at the same time, dalawa o higit pa sa dalawa yung creditor, automatic, it is either a joint obligation or a solidary obligation. Mamaya, i-discuss natin kung ano ba ang pinagkaiba ng joint obligation at solidary obligation. Sir, what if ganito? Dalawa o higit pa sa dalawa yung debtor. Pero, iisa lang yung creditor. Still, ganun pa rin. It is either a joint obligation or a solidary obligation. Kasi dito, ginamit din yung word na or. Sir, what if iisa lang yung debtor pero dalawa o higit pa sa dalawa yung creditor? Still, it is either a joint obligation or a solidary obligation. So, ang tatandaan nyo, kapag dalawa na o higit pa sa dalawa yung debtor and or dalawa o higit pa sa dalawa yung creditor, it is either a joint obligation or a solidary obligation. Kung iisa lang yung debtor and at the same time, iisa lang yung creditor, hindi siya pwedeng tawagin na joint obligation or even a solidary obligation. Now, let's discuss joint obligation and solidary obligation separately. Unahin natin yung joint obligation. So, in a joint obligation, each debtor is liable only to a proportionate part of the debt. And each creditor is entitled only to a proportionate part of the credit. Of course, alam nyo naman na siguro ang pinagkaiba ng debt at credit. Ang debt, utang. Ang credit, pautang. Again, ang debt, utang. Ang credit, pautang. So, sa joint obligation, ang bawat debtor, liable lang siya sa kanyang proportionate part doon sa utang. Hindi siya liable na bayaran yung entire debt. Hindi siya liable na bayaran yung buong utang. So, yung proportionate part niya lang doon sa utang ang babayaran niya. On the other hand, ang bawat creditor naman, Entitled lang siya sa proportionate part ng pautang. So, hindi siya entitled na i-collect lahat yung buong pautang. Yung proportionate part niya lang doon sa pautang ang pwede niyang kolektahin. Let's give examples para mas lalo niyong maintindihan itong joint obligation. Example number one. A and B are indebted to X for 10,000 pesos. In this example, ang debtor ay dalawa, si A at si B. Ang creditor ay iisa, si X lang. Dahil joint obligation to, A is liable only for 5,000 pesos. Yung proportionate part niya doon sa utang. 
Ganon din kay B. Si B ay liable lang for 5,000 pesos. Yung proportionate part niya doon sa utang. As you can see, si A, hindi siya liable na bayaran yung buong utang. Ganon din si B, hindi siya liable na bayaran yung buong utang. So each of them shall pay only their proportionate part of the debt. Since 10,000 pesos yung utang at dalawa yung debtor, i-divide yung 10,000 pesos ng dalawa. So, 5,000 pesos ang proportionate part ng bawat isa. Example number 2, A owes X and Y 8,000 pesos. Dito naman, ang debtor ay iisa, si A. Ang creditor ay dalawa, si X at si Y. Dahil joint obligation to, X can collect only 4,000 pesos. Ganon din si Y. Y can collect 4,000 pesos only. Ang pwede lang nilang i-collect ay yung proportionate part nila doon sa pautang. Since 8,000 pesos yung pautang at dalawa yung creditor, i-divide yung 8,000 pesos ng dalawa. So, 4,000 pesos ang proportionate part ng bawat isa. Next, we proceed to solidary obligation. In a solidary obligation, each debtor is liable for the whole obligation and each creditor is entitled to demand payment of the whole obligation. So, dito nyo na makikita yung difference between joint obligation at solidary obligation. Kasi sa solidary obligation, ang bawat debtor ay liable na bayaran yung buong utang. Kapag binayaran ng isang debtor yung buong utang, pwede niyang i-collect from the other debtors yung sobrang nabayaran niya. Ang bawat creditor naman ay pwedeng mag-collect ng buong pautang. Pwede niyang i-collect yung buong pautang. Kapag kinolekta ng isang creditor yung buong pautang, ibibigay niya yung share ng other creditors doon sa pautang. So yung mga examples ng solidary obligation, madadaanan natin as we discuss the kinds of solidary obligation. So kinds of solidary obligation. There are three kinds of solidary obligation. First is passive solidarity. Second is active solidarity. And third is mixed solidarity. So, dito muna tayo sa passive solidarity. When we say passive solidarity, this is the solidarity on the part of debtors. Meaning to say, the debtors are solidary debtors. For example, A and B, solidary debtors, are indebted to X for 10,000 pesos. So, klarong-klaro naman na sinabi dito na si A at si B ay solidary debtors. Since A and B are solidary debtors, X, the creditor, can demand payment of 10,000 pesos from either A or B. So, pwedeng i-collect ni X yung buong 10,000 pesos from either A or B. Pwedeng si A ang magbayad ng 10,000 pesos or pwedeng si B ang magbayad ng 10,000 pesos. If ever A pays X 10,000 pesos, the obligation is extinguished. Of course, si B hindi na siya magbabayad ng 10,000 pesos kay X dahil nga binayaran na ni A. But A can demand reimbursement of 5,000 pesos from B representing the latter's share in the debt. 
So, meron kasing share sa utang si B, kaya dapat bayaran ni B si A ng 5,000 pesos. Next, the second kind of solidarity obligation is active solidarity. Ito naman, this is the solidarity on the part of the creditors. Kanina, yung passive solidarity, that is the solidarity on the part of the debtors. Ito naman, active solidarity, this is the solidarity on the part of the creditors. So, the creditors are solidarity creditors. For example, A owes X and Y solidarity creditors 8,000 pesos. So, klarong-klaro naman ang sabi, solidarity creditors. Si X at si Y ay solidarity creditors. May pautang silang 8,000 pesos. Since X and Y are solidarity creditors, either X and Y may demand payment of 8,000 pesos from A. So, pwedeng kolektahin ni X kay A yung 8,000 pesos or pwedeng kolektahin ni Y kay A yung 8,000 pesos. If ever A pays X 8,000 pesos, the obligation is extinguished. Since nakakolekta na si X kay A, hindi na pwedeng magkolekta si Y kay A ng 8,000 pesos. But X must give 4,000 pesos to Y representing the latter's share in the credit. Doon kasi sa 8,000 pesos na pautang, may 4,000 pesos na share doon si Y. That's why kailangang ibigay ni X kay Y yung 4,000 pesos. Next, the third kind of solidarity obligation is mixed solidarity or the solidarity on the part of both debtors and creditors. In other words, the debtors are solidarity debtors and the creditors are solidarity creditors. So for example, A and B, solidarity debtors, O, X, and Y, solidarity creditors, 12,000 pesos. So clearly, A and B, are solidarity debtors, and X and Y are solidarity creditors. So X or Y may collect from A or B the total sum of 12,000 pesos. Meaning, si X, pwede siyang mag-collect kay A ng 12,000 pesos. Or si Y, pwede siyang mag-collect kay A ng 12,000 pesos. On the other hand, si X, pwede siyang mag-collect kay B ng 12,000 pesos or si Y, pwede siyang mag-collect kay B ng 12,000 pesos. If ever si A, binayaran niya si X ng 12,000 pesos, the obligation is extinguished. Of course, if binayaran na ni A, hindi na magbabayad si B kay X or Y. However, B must reimburse A 6,000 pesos. Kailangang bayaran ni B si A ng 6,000 pesos kasi ang share ni B doon sa utang ay 6,000 pesos. On the other hand, X must give 6,000 pesos to Y. Kailangang bigyan ni X si Y kasi may share si Y na 6,000 pesos doon sa pautang. Now, I want you to please take note of this. Please take note na kapag walang sinabi sa question or statement kung joint obligation or solidary obligation, ang presumption is joint obligation. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, 
Doon sa ating examples sa joint obligation, since walang sinabi kung joint ba or solidary yung obligation, ang presumption, joint obligation. Now, these are the other terms for solidary obligation and joint obligation. So, ito yung mga other terms for solidary obligation. Kapag nakita nyo na yung mga ganito, automatic solidary obligation na. First, jointly and severally. Of course, kapag jointly lang, that is joint obligation. Pero kapag jointly and severally, solidary obligation. Second, individually and collectively. Third, in solidum. Fourth, mancomunada solidaria. And the fifth, Juntos o separadamente. On the other hand, ito naman yung other terms for joint obligation. We have proportionately, prorata, mancomunada, and mancomunada simple. So kapag nakita nyo na yung mga ganyan, automatic joint obligation na. So that concludes the first part of joint and solidarity obligations.